this wonderful presence. We also saw, we say also thank you to the Lord for the testimony. But uh, you must know that from maybe from uh, Wednesday, you won't see our sister anymore because she'll be waiting in Johannesburg. So you should not say after the testimony, she has left. After being blessed, she has left. No, she did not leave. The Lord has decided that she will be uh, going far from us. Amen. Yeah, we're going to read the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1. I'm going to ask the media to put the slide of the body, the soul, and the spirit. The Bible says, but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boosters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slenders, without self-control, brutal, despiser of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. Tell your neighbor from such people, turn away. Listen, these uh, later days, the way the life is, there are too much pressure upon life, and it's easy for people to develop mental problems it's also people to develop affective problems. When we see as our homes have been destroyed, when we see family being destroyed, most of the children that are growing, they are growing with a bitterness. Hallelujah. And uh, the system today, especially when you go in Europe, they are too much pressure in a way that even staying in a marriage has become a problem. So there is an increased rate of divorce everywhere. And that that's those who divorce, they go, if it's a, it's a wife or the husband, they go, they separate apart, but they live in stronger pain. Children also, they live also in strong pain and they, they develop a lot of bitterness. Hallelujah. Then we have a society where people are prone to bad things because of a bitterness, because of what people are going through, because of life and eco economy is very difficult, people easily may develop mental problems. Hallelujah. Now, this is the system of the Antichrist. As I told you that a human being has a spirit, you have a soul, and you have also a body. Hallelujah. Now, the, your soul is the warehouse of your mind your emotions, and your will. Now, you see that there is a great focus of uh, demonic activities on the soul. There are demonic activities on our mind. There are demonic activities on our hearts. There are demonic activities to weaken our decision-making. Hallelujah. Then we have to know that there is a, a sp the spirit where we come, we, uh, we fellowship with God. Now, your soul can uh, play a role in salvation and also in affecting your spirit. The soul can help, can uh, play a role of a shield so that bad things do not affect your spirit, but it can also play a good role of whatever is in your spirit must come out. Hallelujah. So that our life is affected by the life of God instead of being affected by what we see, what we hear, and our environment. We must know that our environment influences us too much. Hallelujah. Now, I even, when we were busy praying, I didn't even know where to start because all the preaching of today have been said. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the Bible says, He has given us not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. 
What the Lord has given us is a spirit that gives us a power. When you speak about power, it's first about the spirit. Hallelujah. But when you speak about love, it's about your soul. And when you speak about the mind, it's also about your soul. Hallelujah. Then the work of the Holy Spirit is not only, only to make us to be prayerful people, speaking in tongues, but there is a work that the Spirit is doing in our mind. There is also a work that the Spirit is doing in our heart. Now when they speak about love, the love represents the fruits of the Spirit. And when you go in Galatians chapter 5, the Bible said the fruit of the Spirit is love. Hallelujah. It's speaking also about our patience, self-control. Hallelujah. Now when you go through that, you must understand something. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is not only about us being a good people, but it's also a way of equipping our soul, hallelujah, so that we can develop God's character. And it will be easy for us to relate or to align with uh, the plans of God for our life. And also for us to align with the standard of the kingdom. Hallelujah. This is what it has been told that there are times where the Lord will remove certain things in us before to give us a blessing. So that our soul has the capacity to align to the divine plan for our lives. And also to align to the divine or the, the standard of the kingdom of God. Because there are certain decisions you can't make them if your soul is, is uh, your mind and your emotions is not affected by the Spirit of God. I might turn to somebody. Hallelujah. So there are times the Lord may allow wilderness for us to change the way of thinking. As the sister was saying that, I didn't know that a God of plans is better than my thinking. But for her to align and to have that knowledge, she has the first to go to a certain journey. Hallelujah. When you receive your deliverance, instead of uh, seeing things improving, but you lose your job. Hallelujah. You, you are suspended. You fast. You lose your job. But uh, through that uh, journey, the Lord was working first in her. So that from now on, she knows that God has uh, better plans than what I always uh, think. Hallelujah. That kind of knowledge, no one will remove her in a spirit. It becomes so strong. Hallelujah. That from now on, even for the new job that I'm getting, there is something that the, the Lord is planning. Hallelujah. Now, we must know something. Wilderness is not meant to destroy us, but it's meant by the Spirit of God in order to work in our mind. Hallelujah. Work also in our heart and to give us a power that will make a decision that will always align to the principle of God and also to bring us in the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember, as we did say about the, pro the thought process, that a word, experience, what you see, what you hear, they generate uh, thoughts. And uh, those thoughts can also bring or produce emotions. Your emotions affect your decision making. Hallelujah. Now, your decision making will be producing actions. Those actions, as they are, they repeat, it become an habit, and this habit will build a certain character. Hallelujah. That character will make you now to be doing things that will determine where you are going. So our, your future is determined by what you do. Because what you do is the product of your thinking pattern. Hallelujah. Now, when you give your life to the Lord, there is a work that the Spirit of God must do in you in order to change 
your thinking pattern. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? So that thinking pattern is very important for you to go in your destiny. Sometimes you may go through bad things, but most of the time, our human nature will react to that as a God has forsaken us. But if by the Spirit of God, you discover the ways of the Lord, you realize that the Lord hasn't forsaken you, but the Lord is walking with you and uh, bringing you in your destiny. Hallelujah. And what we have to know, when you are a child of God, God did not only prepare things for you. Am I talking to somebody? But there is also a certain way that is prepared for you to be. Let me give you an example. God did not plan only to give Abraham a child. But God did plan first Abraham to be the father of faith. Ah, am I talking to somebody? And the Bible says, I put laws, I put commandments, I put structure in Abraham. And when you see, even about Abraham and Isaac, the Bible is talking more about Abraham, but less about Isaac. Ah, hallelujah. So, the focus of God is more first on you than the blessing that you may receive. Because it's possible that you are blessed and the blessing may mislead you. It's possible for you to be detached from God. So God always takes time to prepare us. And the focus of God when he starts preparing us, it's first our soul, our thinking pattern, our emotions, and our decision-making power and ability. Hallelujah. Because God may prepare good things for you, but you may not have the capacity to do right things. So God is preparing us not only to have good things, but also to have the capacity to do right things. Hallelujah. Therefore, our soul is very important. It plays a big role in everything that God is doing for us. Hallelujah. So we must know how to take care of our soul. That's the reason why the Bible says we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Why? It's because already what is around you, your past, and the experiences that you are going day by day, it has already programmed you in a certain way. But that program gives that have given you a certain thinking pattern. It is not the standard of the kingdom of God. God does not think as we think. Hallelujah. The God, God does not see things as we see them. So we must be able to see things as God sees them. We must also be able to think as God thinks. Hallelujah. Now, for that, it needs your mind to be transformed by the, renew, the, uh, the renewing process, but it also needs your mind to be equipped. Hallelujah. If your mind is not equipped, if your mind is not renewed, you won't be able to make good decisions. You will be able, you will always be there, you speak in tongue, you dance, but you will be always making bad decisions. Hallelujah. Now, the reason why the Lord is giving us uh, this topic is through this word that the Lord wants to equip us. Hallelujah. Through his uh, spirit that we can be changed and transformed. But there is always a price to pay. Tell your neighbor there is a price to pay. Tell again your neighbor there is a price to pay. Now, if you go in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, I beseech you, I exhort you. In a common English, they say, I beg you, my brothers, by the mercies of God, to offer your body as a living sacrifice. 
Hallelujah. Now, you see that God does not need only your spirit. He needs your soul. In your soul, the Lord needs your mind. The Lord needs your heart. Hallelujah. But the Lord also needs your body. Tell your neighbor, the Lord needs your body. Tell again your neighbor, the, bo- your, the Lord needs your body. Now, we must understand that the body and the soul, they are having appetites that are different from the spirit. That's the reason why the Bible said that we must live by the spirit. And there will always be a fight between the spirits and the flesh. Amen. The Bible said they are contrary to each other. Amen. And daily you have to go through that. That your flesh will fight your spirits. Hallelujah. But you must know that it's only through the ways of sacrifice that we may be able to help or to allow the Spirit of God to lead through our human spirits. Hallelujah. Now, this is the reason why they were telling us we must offer our body. Amen. Our body are needed in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So if you don't know how to sacrifice your body, you want to be able to catch certain things. I may prophesy upon you. I may lay hands upon you. I don't know if we, after laying hands, we have to lay feet on you. Change will never take a place if we don't know the reality of uh, sacrifice. Hallelujah. Remember, I told you that the kingdom of God operates with sacrifice. And when the Bible says we are a chosen generation, we are God's special people. Hallelujah. It did not stop the hallelujah, but he said that we are kings and the priests. In other versions, say we are a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. And that the priest is someone who has been created for only one reason. To offer sacrifices. Hallelujah. This is the reason why in a other language, the priest they call sacrificator. So the man who is made for sacrifices. Hallelujah. Now you we must know that as a priest, is the priesthood that defines everything. When you want to be a special people of God, a peculiar people of God, there is a secret. Hallelujah. The secret is a priesthood. Tell your neighbor the secret is priesthood. This is the reason why when Isaiah was prophesying, he used to prophesy. But uh, one day, the Bible said, I saw after the death of King Uzziah, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Hallelujah. He saw that uh, angels were singing, holy, holy, and the things were shaken. Hallelujah. Then he realized that his uh, lips were filthy or dead. Hallelujah. Then the Bible said they have to take a call from the altar to sanctify him. To say that if you are here, we don't need first you to speak. Hallelujah. Be first, uh, be connected to the altar. I might turn to somebody. This is the reason why I always say, if someone comes with dreams, if someone will come if with prophecies, we must first check the life of that person. Are you connected to the altar? Hallelujah. Because if you are not connected to the altar, another spirit can use you. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you are born to sacrifice. And the Isaiah now understood that the death in heaven, if you want to operate, you must first be connected to the altar. Hallelujah. So for you, the first step of being connected to the altar is to know how to offer your body as a sacrifice. Hallelujah. And the Bible says a living sacrifice. Amen. So it's not that the Spirit of God will make you not to feel what other people they feel. 
But you have an assignment of sacrificing your body. Hallelujah. Do you know that even to fast is a sacrifice of the body? Hallelujah. To pray is a sacrifice of the body. Because after work, the body will tell you that you need to rest. But the Spirit of God is saying, don't, don't rest. Hallelujah. Be in my presence. Then it becomes a sacrifice. You can't uh, see the glory of God without sacrifice. I am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. This is the reason why when Abraham left his father, the first things that the Lord put in his mind and uh, his spirit is to build an altar. Even if you hear the voice of God, even if you are walking with the Lord, you have obeyed an instruction from God, you still need an altar. Tell your neighbor you need too much sacrifices. Hallelujah. It's a true the way of sacrifice that the Lord affects our minds. The Lord affects also our soul. Hallelujah. So, meaning that you sacrifice your body, but your soul needs also to be sacrificed. Amen. Now, if your, body, your soul is not sacrificed, your pride will always be there. That's the reason why the Lord has first to bring you in the wilderness. So that he removes the pride that is in you. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Because God's plan can't be fulfilled when there are things that they are, they are disturbing the Holy Spirit in your life. Hallelujah. We have been told someone like Isaac, it was only his sight that was disturbing the fulfillment of the plan of God. So God has to take his sight so that he won't see who was a blessing. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God works in his way, his own ways. Tell your neighbor, God works in his own ways. We must know how to sacrifice our soul. Sometimes you may go through a certain... Uh, Period. Where people, they despise you. People, they mock you. People, you are going there through shame. And there are other shames. They are not linked to God. But they are more linked, in, uh, they are not linked to us. But they are linked to the fact that we belong to God. Hallelujah. Because your commitment to God, it's making people to have certain expectations. But because they don't see what they are supposed to see, you are in shame. Not because of yourself. You are walking in shame because of God. Because the people are saying, the way you are fasting, the way you always sing, the way you are always going to church, we couldn't expect your life to be as it is today. Hallelujah. So God is not ashamed. Hallelujah. When you go through such kind of shame, because there is a work that is doing in you. Hallelujah. So accept that you must put your soul into the heart uh, upon the altar to allow the Lord to remove whatever is not important for him. Hallelujah. When you put a sacrifice, God won't eat the sacrifice. He wants the smoke. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Tell your neighbor the Lord wants the smoke. Tell again, but the Lord wants the smoke. So these are the, the, there are certain things, when you lose them, you will never get them back. Hallelujah. Because they are not important, you want the smoke. Hallelujah. When Joseph met his father, he was so old that the love that the father used to have, to share, there was not possible that that uh, love to be there. Joseph to stay close to his father. That moment passed already. He was so busy that he didn't even need to be close to his father. Hallelujah. Remember, Joseph was uh, this someone who wanted the father to love him more than others. So he was just a, a bed, a, a just reporting bed about his brothers. Hallelujah. Why? Because that love, it was very good for him. 
But that laugh was disturbing the Holy Spirit. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. As long as it was there, hallelujah, there was no way that God could fulfill his plan. So this is the reason why. Because of the word that was upon him, the Bible said the Lord has to create hatred from his brothers, to disconnect him from that love of the Father, to be with the Ishmaelites, to be with the people that he don't know, hallelujah. But the God was fulfilling his will to bring him in his destiny. Hallelujah. The only thing that Joseph was supposed to do is to put his soul on the altar. Hallelujah. Because when there is a pain, when you are on the altar, you are not going to retaliate. Hallelujah. I might turn to somebody. Hallelujah. This is the reason why they told us that Anna, through the altar, she understood the plan of God. That's the reason why when she get a child, she didn't go to Penina and say, I have a child. But she went to the Lord and said, I give you to the child. Samuel was not a man for Penina to see that Anna was having a child. Samuel was a man to be a child. Hallelujah. That he will be leading the people. He will be leading the nation to his destiny. Hallelujah. But it needs a process where Anna is to put a soul on the altar, die to herself, hallelujah, that uh, then the Lord understood that because you are no more alive, you are dead, now I have to resurrect something new in you so that when I give you Samuel, you are not going to tell Penina, I'm also having a child. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Tell your neighbor, Samuel was not a man for Penina. It was um, a divine plane. Hallelujah. There are certain Penina in your life that will never die. Because there will be God's instrument just to push you, hallelujah, to the ways of the altar, in the deep secret of God. Where you start thinking not as a, everyone a thing. Give me a child, I will give back to you. He didn't say, give me a child so that the Penina will stop mocking on me. Hallelujah. She used to do those uh, prayers. Hallelujah. But in the, in the intimacy there, hallelujah, she has first to sacrifice her soul so that she won't say, give me a child. So that I will tell Penina, I have also a child. But she said that if you give me a child, I will give this child back to you. Hallelujah. Now, you see, if from the first day of her prayers, she could conceive, hallelujah, every morning when she's pregnant, hallelujah, she was supposed to be there. Penina is around. She said that I'm tired. Oh, this is a pregnancy. Hallelujah. But because she understood why her womb was created. When uh, the child was there, she was just uh, thinking, oh, I want this child to come because I have to give this child back to God. Hallelujah. You know, they ask, God won't bless you for people to stop mocking on you. He has a plan with your blessings. That did not depend on what people they are doing. Hallelujah. So you are wasting your time when the Lord gives you something, you pass by people that they used to mock on you so that they may see. You are just wasting your time. God is a plane. But for Anna to catch that, it needs a process. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor the way of the altar. Hallelujah. It's only when she understood that she's a priest. Hallelujah. Then the Lord has to release. Hallelujah. Because Samuel was a carrying three types of anointing. 
He was a king. He was a prophet. He was also a priest. Hallelujah. Those kind of people, they can come only through the priestly lineage. Hallelujah. Do you know that that time, for someone to be a priest, he was supposed to be born from the lineage of priests. Samuel was not a descendant of Aaron. Was not a descendant of Levi. Hallelujah. She was a descendant of a woman who understood, who understood priesthood. Who has to offer her body and everything so that she can generate now a priest. Uh, am I talking to somebody? And that this priest will be coming having a prophetic anointing and a royal anointing. Hallelujah. So, in God's laboratory, hallelujah, I am talking to somebody. What was, the Lord was uh, cooking something, but it needs a proper channel. Now, when a land is safe, hallelujah, then the Lord has to release what was the cooking, hallelujah. God has a plan for us, hallelujah. Though it does not matter what you are going through, hallelujah. The Lord wants you to understand your body needs to be a sacrifice. Your soul needs to be a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Now, what you see around you, I forbid problems to depress you in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, problems are not meant to depress. They are meant to press us in the priesthood. So that when we understand, then we become a channel that the Lord will use for everything that is cooking in heaven to show up. I prophesize upon you. You are a channel that God has chosen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is the reason why we should not think that the prayer problems are meant to destroy us. If you don't have this perspective, you will always be depressed. The Bible says, do not worry about anything. But in everything, practice priesthood. And by practicing that, you will sacrifice your body, you will sacrifice your mind, you will sacrifice your heart, hallelujah. Therefore now, there will be something, hallelujah. You will be transformed, hallelujah, by the new development. When they, the word they use for renewing, it say new, in Greek it means new development. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. So God used that to transform us so that we know how to think as a thing. Hallelujah. You want to be rich unless you understand that your riches is for the kingdom. The Lord will be first holding because he's still just cooking. He wants you to align to his Hallelujah. Now, for when you are waiting to have a more, to be giving to God, you are thinking as a man. Because the priest, they, made, they, are, they are meant for sacrifice. So God has designed you for sacrifice. So in this difficult moment, even financially, you must show the Lord how you believe in him. Hallelujah. When you give, when you, have, uh, in, uh, you are in abundance, it's not a sacrifice. It does not, it's not too much heavy. What you give, when you have to take that risk, hallelujah, of not uh, paying some installment because the Lord wants something. That one is a sacrifice. Hallelujah. It's only sacrifice that open portals in the spiritual realm. 
I might turn to somebody. Tell your neighbor, you are born a priest. Hallelujah. So we must understand this. Even when you sing, we are a chosen generation. You have done well. That chosen generation has a secret. The secret of manifesting that we are really chosen generation is the sacrifice. Hallelujah. So our body, our soul plays a big role in the manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. So you may go through a lot of things. God wants to change your way of thinking. Hallelujah. Now this is the reason why every time you take the word of God, there is a transformation that is taking place. Hallelujah. And there is a new development in your thinking pattern, in your emotions and decision making. So that it can be synchronized with what the Lord has deposited already in your spirit. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? When you, are, when you, re, you receive a prophecy, the first thing that the prophecy will do is to bring you in the process of fulfillment. Joseph received a prophecy by himself through a dream. You'll get her, you'll be big. But the Bible is saying in Psalm that he was tested by Isa, by the word that he received. So what he went through to be disconnected from his father, to suffer hatred and betrayal, to go to the dry pit, it's because of that word. Hallelujah. Now listen. If your design is a bread, hallelujah, you must first take the wheat out of either tree. Hallelujah. I might turn to somebody. Then when you take it out of either tree, you must expose it to the sun. After exposing to the sun, you, it must go to a certain pressure. Amen. For it to become flower. So that a flower will also need water, will need, will need a lot of things. After the preparation, it needs now to go in the fire. It's only when it is in the fire that you can start to feel the smell. That smell is what the Bible calls the new development. Then it becomes out a bread. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Now, most of the time when you receive a prophecy, the prophecy will do the same work. Hallelujah. To be their disconnections, their pressures, their exposures to the sun. You have to go through a certain things to give you a shape. You have to go through fire. It's only that fire that will bring the smell that will attract. Ah, am I talking to somebody? God can't make a bread when the wheat is still on the tree. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. This is the reason why you may receive deliverance, you lose your job, so that you know that my life does not depend on the job. Hallelujah. My life depends on God. But if God wants, He can give me a job when he wants and how he wants. So this is the reason, even by listening to the testimony, we must learn the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are delivered, suspended. Hallelujah. Then you start fasting, then you see, ah, the mess of God. While I'm waiting for the closure of the suspension, I get a job that seems to be a little bit good. Hallelujah. But while I continue with the fasting, I'm dismissed. Hallelujah. And the new job that was there, I also, it also stopped. They say, just out of the blue, we stop paying you. I might turn to somebody. Then the Lord has to do something better. Hallelujah. You can't have the same job for you to move to another one. So in between there, the Lord has first to work in that person. 
that this person will discover that God, the ways of God are not our ways. I right, might turn to somebody. Hallelujah. May your spirit be equipped this morning in Jesus' mighty name. May your mind be equipped in Jesus' mighty name. May your soul be equipped in Jesus' mighty name. May your heart be equipped in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. It did not give us a spirit of fear. Hallelujah. There are times where you have to lose your job for you to learn not to fear about your future. Because when you speak about worry and anxiety, it's about the future. Hallelujah. So you don't think about the future. You first of think between it's you and God. Because it does not, God does not have a past. It does not have a present. It does not have a future. God is just God. Now you learn how to walk with God. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Then you don't think about future. You think about what God has in store for me. Ah, am I talking to somebody? As you are there, there are things that God has in store for you. But you are working very hard. You are thinking only about your future. God wants first to stop you thinking about your future. He wants to bring you to the ways of the priesthood so that you may discover what he has in store for you. Hallelujah. So now, the way you deal with a fish is different the, the same in the way that you're going to deal with wheat to have a bread. Hallelujah. The fish, you just disconnect also it from the water. Hallelujah. But you are not going to put pressure on the, on the fish. I might talk to somebody. I might talk to somebody. Though you may expose the fish sometimes to the sun. I might talk to somebody. So don't say, why is this one, his life is going through. He, him, is a fish. He's meant to be a fish that they will eat. You, you are meant to be a bread. Hallelujah. I might talk to somebody. Amen? So when they bring a fish and a bread, what the Lord is going to do, to do what? Is to multiply. Am I talking to somebody? They talk less about fish. But they, we just say the multiplication of uh, the bread. Why the focus is only on the bread? Because the process for the bread is too long. I might turn to somebody. The more the glory is a big, hallelujah, the process may be a little bit complicated according to our mindset. But it is not complicated for God. He has done it for him to work in us. Hallelujah. Amen. There are times where you are going through trouble and tribulations. The Lord wants to choose what to hear, what to listen. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to choose the company of people that will be with. The Bible says, this is the reason why people love you too much. The Lord will make sure that they start gossiping about you. Because you don't know that these people are not meant to be my destiny helper. The Bible says, bad company corrupts a good character. Hallelujah. So if you don't understand that you have to disconnect for certain people, the Lord will make it in own, his own way. That's the reason why they criticize about you, they mock you, they gossip about you, because you didn't understand that uh, you, as a believer, you can't be with people who are always drunker. They speak only about parties. Uh, they speak So you don't understand that. Because you want to force yourself in them, then the Lord will create an atmosphere that will make your heart to be affected by pain of being gossiped. So that the one who feel that, it will remove something in you. There will be a new development. When people, they abandon you, 
It's a strategy from God so that you and him, you know how to exchange all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, you'll be just spending uh, every day, four hours with friends. You are just talking. But you don't know that in those four hours, you can break through spiritually and go getting information that will change the future, not only for your life, but also for your wife, for your husband, for your children. Hallelujah. And after speaking for five hours, Hallelujah. As it was not enough, you have to spend the two hours on social media and sleep. Then waking up. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor you are meant to be a priest. The life of priest is a life of separation. Hallelujah. That's the reason why the Lord had to separate Joseph from his family in the dry pit so that he can say, Lord, help me. I need your mercy. For me to be alive, here is just your mercy. Hallelujah. I don't know if he was uh, telling the Lord, can you just uh, bring someone to come and take me out? Maybe scream uh, for help. No one did not uh, come. Hallelujah. Until maybe a prayer could uh, come out of his uh, heart. Then you'll discover that every time I'll be in trouble, before to call for help from people, I will always call from the son of David. Hallelujah. If you are not a Baratimus, you can't value the sight. Hallelujah. Because you would, since you have been born, you just see. Hallelujah. But Baratimus know that if I see, it's because someone say, I want you to see. I am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. So every time he sees, he remember that there is someone who said to me, you must see. You may not go through that, but your spirit must know that if I see, it's because of God. If I have Samuel, it's because of God. If I have Isaac, it's because of God. If I have riches, it's because of God. If I have this, it's because of God. If I have a job that I was expecting, it's because of God. And God has a plan with uh, this job. Hallelujah. May the Lord equip your mind. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. This is the reason why you may fast. Instead of God giving you a miracle, He starts but by waking in you. Hallelujah. It's like the fasting is removing things. The fasting makes you, can isolate you so that you pray more. Hallelujah. You learn how to wait just on, on God. Hallelujah. You learn how to keep the word of God in your heart. Hallelujah. You'll be in trouble instead of giving your job, the Lord give you a word. So you'll be just uh, taking that word in your life. Then you'll learn that we don't uh, live only by bread, but we live by the words that proceed from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. When Saul lost the donkeys, when he met someone, someone did not give him the donkeys. I might turn to somebody. He just said, don't worry about your donkeys. They are found. And he even said that when you leave this place, when you'll be going, you'll also meet people, they will tell you again, don't worry about your donkeys. Hallelujah. So the Lord was teaching him just to know how to believe and to trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because your emotions will tell you that, no, it's finished. But your faith will tell you that God is faithful. Hallelujah. And say somewhere, Saul, in this journey, you will meet a troop of prophets. When you'll be among them, 
Oh, the Spirit of God will be upon you. And you'll be changed in another man. Hallelujah. So don't worry about your donkeys. I don't want to see worries and anxiety in your life. I don't want you to tell me just about your future. I don't want me to think just to, to talk about your future because I know the future better than you. But there is something that I'm doing in you. Learn to trust in my word. Hallelujah. Learn how to get the mind of God. Learn how to know the ways of the Lord. Hallelujah. Saul discovered that though I've lost donkeys, as I'm now in God's presence, he was just a thinking now about what he heard. The Lord has chosen you to be a king. The Lord has chosen you. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell somebody, don't think about what you have lost. May you listen to the word of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. May you listen to what the Spirit of God is telling you. Don't worry about your donkeys. You are a king. Don't worry about donkeys. You are a king. Don't worry about what you have lost. There is something that I have in store for you. Hallelujah. You need to receive this oil. Hallelujah. This oil, this oil that you receive, it's going to bring you to another journey. You will meet the people, they will keep on repeating what you heard already. Don't worry about your donkeys. Don't say, I've heard these things before. The Lord wants you just to accept that. Don't worry about your donkeys. Hallelujah. In this journey where you are going, hallelujah, you will find the prophets. But at this a prophet, they are just in front of the troop of the Philistine. So that you learn that God can do things in the presence of the enemy. I might turn to somebody. Why the prophet was, were not running from the Philistine? Hallelujah. They were so busy in the kingdom of God that the work they were doing had to paralyze the Philistine. Ah, am I talking to somebody? There are times you are giving work to your enemies because there's still too much in you that God has to remove. When you discover how to be busy in the kingdom of God, God will stop the Philistine. The word of God was fulfilled in the presence of the Philistine. They were just there, but the prophet, they were here. They were so busy in the kingdom. The Lord was teaching you him. You don't need donkeys. See these people, they are so busy. If you become busy, then my spirit will be upon you. I might turn to somebody. And the Bible says he was now changed in another man. And the Lord brought him to the throne. Hallelujah. That throne was a new development. Tell your neighbor new development. Hallelujah. I don't know the place. Maybe I did not read properly the Bible. But I don't know the verse where they say, those donkeys, they came and give them to, to Saul and say, these are the donkeys that you have been looking for. Hallelujah. But as a king, he had a lot of rights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right of receiving donkeys. Right of deceiving cows. Right. So, it means that the place of God was beyond what he lost. I am I talking to somebody? So now, this is the reason why the Bible says, do not worry about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, pray. Hallelujah. In everything, practice your priesthood. In everything, seek the face of God. In everything, sacrifice your body. In everything, sacrifice your soul. So that the peace of God, that is 
above human understanding, hallelujah, will be now affected your mind and your heart, hallelujah. In the midst of lion, you don't fear. Ah, hallelujah. You are just there because there is, you know that God is with me. I am I turning to somebody? Hallelujah. So, someone like Daniel, he was so busy in the kingdom of God that even when you put in the den of lion, he won't be scared. I am I turning to somebody? May you be busy in the kingdom of God. May you know how to trust the Lord. May you know how to believe in the Lord. May you know how to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There is a new generation that the Lord is bringing. Hallelujah. Say we are that new generation. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to transform us. Amen. If your thinking pattern is not changed, when they will tell you that if you don't bow before this statue, you will go to the fire. You will say, let me save my life. Hallelujah. But if your mind is affected, has been renewed already, you say that, no, I will go in the fire. Hallelujah. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? You see, even to make that decision, it needs the work of the Spirit in them. Ah, hallelujah. May the Spirit of the Lord change you and transform you at this moment. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just wave your hands. The Holy Spirit is with you. Just wave your hands. Just wave your hands. Zabagadagareba. Zabagadagareba. Reba Zabagareba. Listen, you know, someone like Paul, they used to call him Saul. He was the persecuting of people because they've abandoned the ways of his, his traditions. Hallelujah. The Lord has to strike him with blindness. Hallelujah. While he was blind, now he was just uh, thinking about what he was hearing. While he was uh, blind, he learned that there are people who are special. The Lord said, go to Ananias. He will pray for you. So that he discovered that there are certain people, if they lay hands upon you, you will recover sight. There are certain people who have been anointed to show you your destiny. Hallelujah. Then from that time, he put his knowledge aside. He put his pride aside. He said, I have to humble myself to seek more this God. Today is the covenant day where the Lord is opening doors of destiny. I don't know what you are going through, but the Lord is awaking to open the doors of destiny. Maybe the Lord did strike you with joblessness. It was a way to lead you in the ways of the Lord that the door of your destiny will open. Just again wave your hands, let the Holy Spirit work. 
Rasoba Kataraba Zabagada Ganeba Sodeke Rababa Sakayaka Rababa Sakayaka Zagada Gayaka The Lord said, Remove worries, remove anxieties. The Lord is the one who is holding your future. Your job does not hold your future. What you have lost does not hold your future. The one who is holding your future is the Lord. What he has in store for you is better than what you are planning. What he has in store for you is better than what you are thinking. You are not lost. Don't worry about your donkeys. The Lord has chosen you to be a king. Lift up your hands and now I want you to speak to the Lord. Just said the Lord, I offer all my life to you. My body is an offering to you. My soul is an offering to you. My mind, my thoughts. Lord, I surrender myself to you because I know that you are faithful. Tell the Lord that I know that what you're having in store for me is great and as we are praying i saw a lot of books being opened you will read the book of your destiny today may your spirit be connected in jesus mighty name i say may your destiny may your spirit be connected
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen, here, it's not first about your enemies. It's about the God opening doors for you. Hallelujah. It's about the eternity to take a place in the time and to show up in the time. God are having things in store for you. Hallelujah. Saul didn't know that by going to seek for donkeys, there was an oil that was awaiting for him. There is a special oil for you this morning that will connect you. It won't tell you, go and look for donkeys. But say, this is the way that's going to take. Not as you came here, but this is the way. Until you meet people close to the sepulchre of Rachel. Until you go there to the mountain of Gilboa. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening the doors of destiny. He has a good thing in store for you. Thank you, Jesus. Not by power. Not by mighty. But by the Spirit of God. By His mercy. By His favor. Learn how to count only on the mercies of God. Not on your qualifications. Not on your CV. Learn how to count on God. It's not what you did to people. You have helped them. You are waiting for a favor from them. The Lord said that I have a favor. That is more than the favor of people that have been waiting. If they did not return that favor, it's because God did not order them to return it. Because he wants himself to return the favor. Oh, the favor of the Lord is better than the favor of people. Thank you, Jesus. Rakela soba kita. Retea. Sadekereba. Retea. Sope kia. Rakite, rakite. Hipa reka reba. Hie. Kite, kite. Kite, kite. Rasababa. Rese de kareba. Sabada garaba. Chimeke.
Oh, thank you, Lord. Sagittaria. There is an anointing this morning that is uh, breaking the yoke for you to, to go in your destiny. This all does not care about your past. This all does not care about your family background. I don't know which kind of family you are coming from. It can be a very cursed family. But this all is here to introduce you in the plans of God. Kareba ba 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 Raseba karete Ya ba 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 Ya ba 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 Ya ba 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 Of Samuel could not favor him to be a priest because he came, he was a Ephraim a mite from the lineage of Joseph. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! But the labor of the mother, hallelujah, did make that uh, natural disadvantage, hallelujah, to be a glory for the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, the Lord Jesus has labored for us at the cross. Hallelujah. Don't say, I'm from Africa and they are not good things. This all that you receive today does not care about it. May you receive the grace of God and experience the power of His mercies. The DNA of uh, Samuel was telling him that you can't be a priest. I don't know what your DNA is saying, but I'm here to tell somebody. The Lord will show mercy this morning. The Lord will show his a favor. There is a special hall. Hallelujah. God has a things in store for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Kasumega Rebayaka. Raba Sede Kereba. Zoba Degare. Zaba Dege Dege. Rasuke Dega. Yaba Baba Baba Baba. Rete Kate Kete Reba. Reba Baba 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 Baba.
know, when Moses was in the palace, they were doing everything for him. But circumstances want him to go out of the palace. Hallelujah. He never came back in Egypt to be a priest anymore. Because he discovered that he was not meant to be a prince in Egypt. He is a prince in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now you see when you are a prince, you are in the palace. If you say water, they bring you water. Hallelujah. But uh, when he had an encounter with the Lord, on the rock when he said water, water will come. Oh, hallelujah! Sapakarabayaka. Don't worry about what you have lost. There are greater things that are ahead for you. Hallelujah. It took 40 years for him to discover his real identity. Hallelujah. Maybe his age could tell him that it is late. You are old. But it was 80 years. He could even climb mountains. Hallelujah. And when he was 120, for him to die, the Lord has to kill him. Hallelujah. It's only God has to decide. And the Bible says he was still strong. He did not lose his sight. He was still strong. Hallelujah. And this is the reason why people like Caleb, they receive the same spiritual DNA. He said, I'm still have the same strength that I had 45 years ago when the Lord was telling that he will give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what you are losing. The Lord has greater things in store for you. Just lift up your hand. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for you 
bless your people. It's a time to open a new chapter, Lord. Because you have decided to be so. There is a special all upon everyone. There is a special anointing upon everyone. You know, when the Spirit of God is upon you, you will know that you don't need to go and be drunk for you to forget your problem. You don't need to go and dance in a club, sweat and uh, pray for your problem, for you to forget your problem. But when the spirit, you are connected to the Spirit of God, you know that music are not meant for sweating. They are meant for us to be connected. When we sing, our spirit will see and catch what God has in store for us. I will just wake up and say, I'm a king. Hallelujah. Why? Because I saw it in my spirit. The Lord is opening the doors of destiny. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name for your mercy, Father. We say again, thank you for your favor. Because we don't have any other word to define what you are doing for us. We say it's because of your mercy. It's because of your grace. It's because of your favor. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say amen. Love.